last time I talked about my trip to Niagara Falls, now I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff I did in Toronto. The main reason I'm recording these videos is I don't want to forget what I did, how I felt about it, the little details that you pick up every day, the stuff you the stuff you add to stories to kind of make it to make them more entertaining. I don't want to forget that, so I'm recording myself talking about this trip so that I don't forget what I did because it really was fun and I I I really don't want to just I don't want it to just disappear. So other stuff I did. I bought a city pass which gives you access to five uh, attractions. So there's, there's four attractions that are definitely set out, which are the ROM, the Royal Ontario Museum, Casa Loma, the Aquarium, and the CN Tower. And then the fifth one you can choose between going to Toronto Zoo or the Science Museum, and I picked the zoo just because I, I'm more of a zoo person than I am a science museum person. Um, the Toronto Zoo is very far away. It's quite far from the city centre. It took me an hour and a half to get there. I had to take a train, an actual overground train, to, to get to the zoo. So if you're going to go to the zoo, it takes a long time to get there. I think it's the same for the Science Museum. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I would recommend the City Pass. I, I think it, it was $85, and so for five attractions, that works out as 17 Canadian dollars each, which is fairly good value. Um, the zoo is an okay zoo. It's not fantastic. It's not terrible. Um, there is a terrible zoo where I live at the moment, and that zoo, the zoo where I live makes me depressed, and uh, when I walk past it, it just breaks my heart. So compared to that, the zoo was fantastic, but compared to other zoos, it was, it, it's, it's not a cruel zoo. The animals have enough space, but um, it's just not particularly inventive. They don't really, they, there, was, there was no kind of, there was no way that it really pushed the boundaries. There was no way it let you sort of view animals in a new way, unlike some zoos I've been to, which really put emphasis on animals you, you would normally not spend that much time looking at. So in that way, it, it was just okay. Um, it did, however, have giant pandas, and I've never seen giant pandas in person before. I actually lived in Scotland when Scotland had more giant pandas than it did Lib Dem MBs. But uh, the times that I went to the zoo in Scotland, in Edinburgh, <laughs> the pandas were never on display. They uh, One time I went on my birthday and I was really excited to see the giant pandas. And they were like, oh, we're not showing it because we think she's going to give birth. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to share my birthday with a giant panda cub. And she wasn't even pregnant. She was just faking it. So, yeah, that was annoying. But I did get to see the giant pandas in Toronto Zoo. And um, they are very impressive. They're very cute. One thing that struck me, they don't move a lot. But when they do move, they look like bears. When they actually, when they're walking around, I got to see the, especially the male walked around a bit while I was watching they do look like wild animals, they look like bears. When they're just sitting and eating or lying down and sleeping, they kind of look like people in panda costumes. They look like humans wearing like a fur costume, which made me suspicious. Maybe Toronto doesn't have pandas. No, I think they do. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, it was interesting. Um, so I got to see pandas and that was nice. I got to see a grizzly bear which I haven't seen a grizzly bear before, I don't think. It's huge, but it was asleep, so it wasn't that scary. Um, so that was the zoo. The Royal Ontario Museum is really good. I really recommend the Royal Ontario Museum. I wish I had had more time there. I didn't give myself enough time. I didn't get to see all the exhibits, which is a shame because it was really, it's really good. It has a lot of interesting stuff and it's laid out in an interesting way. They have a mummy and I got to see the mummy, which I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with because I've always wanted to see an actual like live mummy. Um, and it was very well preserved and it was incredible to think that it was however many millennia old. So it, that was really impressive. And they have, they have lots of interesting stuff from, from the Middle East, from Europe, from, Asia from Africa they they have a they're from indigenous Canadian 
cultures, they have a lot of, of interesting stuff at the ROM. So definitely leave a lot of time to do the ROM properly. Uh, Casa Loma was interesting for me because I am an X-Men fan and that's they use that for um, the X-Mansion in certain shots. So I really liked that. I liked thinking I was in the X-Mansion. Later, this isn't part of the city pass, but I, I booked it separately. I did an escape room from Casa Loma, specifically from the underground tunnels from Casa Loma. I did an escape room um, and that was amazing because I did an escape room. I escaped from the sub-levels of the X-Mansion. So I am essentially Magneto now. That is how that works. And no one can say otherwise. Um, so that was really fun. Castle Loma, as an attraction, is fine. It's the only tourist castle in North America, which I find amazing because in England there are just so many of them. And, yeah, so... Castle Loma is fine. Um, the CN Tower is really good. I went very early in the morning to avoid queues. I would have loved to have gone in the evening because I love city views at night. I love seeing city lights uh, in the in the darkness. I think it looks really impressive. But the later it gets, the longer you have to queue up. And life is too short. Holidays are too short to spend three, four hours in a queue. So I went in the early morning, and the views of Toronto are spectacular, no matter what the time of day. So that was really good. I went, I, I, it opens at nine. I was there at nine o'clock when it opened. So that was really good. And uh, I went up in the elevator. Uh, the glass floor at, at not at Castle Lama, at the CN Tower is brilliant. I've done glass floors before in other very high up attractions and they've it's never really done anything for me i just thought oh it's just a, it's just a floor but they i don't know what it is about the glass floor at the cn tower maybe it's the angle or something it really does impress upon you how high up you are it's incredible i found it very hard to move when i was standing on the glass floor i i i, I found myself with um sort of uh, almost not vertigo but just acrophobia i was i was finding it very hard to to walk on the glass but yeah really good gave visceral thrill so do do the glass floor at the cn tower if you go to the cn tower and the final um the aquarium was also on the city pass and the aquarium is okay. There is a very good aquarium where I live right now, which I have been to three times in the past two years. And it's amazing. It has whale sharks, it has this massive central tank which you walk around and it's incredible and you get to see all the creatures from different angles. So that has spoiled other aquariums for me. The Toronto Aquarium is fine. And before I had seen the aquarium where I live now, I would have been like, oh yeah, it's great. Now I, no, no. Um, I, it, it, it's, it's fine. It's, it's just, it's not as good as the one where I live. It did, however, have one very good aspect, although this was entirely incidental, not something they had planned. When I was walking through the shark tank, so the shark tank has a, a walkway through it so you can walk through and watch the sharks go all above you, and it's, it's very um, impressive, although I've seen it before. There were people cleaning the tank, and there was one man whose job it was to keep the sharks away from the people who were cleaning the tank. I think they didn't want the sharks going back into the areas where they had just cleaned. This man had a brightly colored stick about this long, and he would wave it in front of them, and the sharks would go in the other direction. One shark, it didn't work. One shark was very determined to go back where he had been. Um, the man waving the brightly coloured stick tried waving it in front of him. The shark didn't notice. The shark kept on persisting. The shark sort of lightly nudged against him. Um, and it, it turned into a sort of battle of wills between this man with the, with the brightly coloured stick and the shark. And for a long time, the shark was winning. The, the man kept on losing ground to the shark. Eventually, the man managed to actually 
guide the shark away with the with the stick but it was it took a while it was about 20 minutes and that was very entertaining to watch um but it was not a planned exhibit but the toronto the Tor toronto aquarium is fine uh i also other things i did i went to the uh the ago the art gallery of ontario uh, that was very good. That's that's that has a lot of interesting uh, exhibits. That's a lot of uh, indigenous art and just lots of very nice sculptures and paintings. Um, I'm not a huge fan of art, of classical art. I I try to go because I like to expose myself to new ideas, and sometimes I'll find a piece that I really like. But I'm not the kind of person who can look at art for ages and ages. So I, d I did a tour with the museum uh, because I thought it would, it would make me see more of it. And that was worth doing because the, the tour guide was interesting. Um, I also went to another art museum, a modern art museum uh, near the Toronto Harbour. And I, I didn't understand any of it. I really didn't get the point the artist was trying to make. Um, and it, it just, it went over my head. I just, I don't think in that kind of way, sadly. But it still, it was, that one was free. Uh, so I didn't really mind that I, I didn't get it. Um, and I guess some of the pieces look nice anyway. There was a massive toy car. Um, there was a massive toy car, which um, had a little propeller on the, the end. And when you walked in, the, one of the, the gallery workers pressed a button in a remote that they had hidden in their hand and the propeller turned on. And I figured this out, and I, I tried to goad the guy into turning the propeller on constantly, and he wouldn't, sadly. What else? I had high tea at a very posh hotel. That was very nice. I got to listen to gossip about the Toronto elites. I paid a lot of money to listen to gossip about the Toronto elites, because everyone around me was talking very loudly about their problems, and they were all very rich and affluent. Um, and the tea itself was very nice. I had a lovely earl grey tea and some very nice cakes and sandwiches so that was worth doing uh, it's very expensive so i think unless you're like me unless you're kind of part of the the childless few who could just go on holiday on their own like you probably can't go but i i, I could go because i don't have to worry about anyone else so that was nice i went to several improv classes at the second city and that was really exciting for me. I'm a huge fan of Bill Murray, of Tina Fey, so I was really excited to go to Second City and to get to try their classes. I've done improv classes before, um, and but they were still just really fun. I haven't done improv uh, since last year uh, when I was in Melbourne, and it was just it was so much fun to just to just do and to just get to 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 do that kind of stuff again. That was really awesome, and I I went to. I went to an improv show at Second City, and that was really good. That was really funny. Um, it was it was people who had just passed their their course, their their improv course, and it was that was really fun. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, and then I went to a sketch show at Second City, which was not so good. It was very mundane. Like it was it was it was the kind of sketches I've seen a hundred times before. But they did do one good sketch, which was Alice in Boring Wonderland, which I thought was hysterical. So that was good. That that sort of made up for the, the rest of this show. Um I also went to some poetry readings, poetry open mics. I went I made sure there were open mics before I went. Um so I got to read poetry as well as listen to it. I really enjoy performing poetry. Um, I, I I really like rhyming poetry. I love I love rhyming poetry. And sadly, not many people perform rhyming poetry at most of the poetry readings I go to. I think people think it's somehow low art, which I disagree with. There is a psychological effect of rhyming which makes it sound more true to the human mind. So I think putting your art into rhyme is a great way to bring out the message in it, but what do other people don't agree. So there was, I, I was the only person who read rhyming poetry at either of the, the things I went to, but that's fine. I, I got a good response, which is nice. Um, people, people seem to appreciate it. 
which is always always uh, uh, a nice thing to have. And I haven't performed poetry in so long, so it was very nice to get a good response after all that time. I tried poutine. It's nice. It's chips and gravy and cheese. It's it's you know it's it's nothing more than the sum of its parts. But this the parts are very nice together. So good. I I've had Canadian friends sort of moan to me like, oh, you can't get poutine here, which I'm fairly certain you could make it yourself. And maybe there is a trick I'm missing. Also, apparently I, I didn't get real poutine because it wasn't in Montreal, so you have to go to Montreal for real poutine. Um, which, okay, uh, I don't know if I will, I don't know when I will, if I will go to Montreal, but sure. Um, but the poutine I had was nice. Um, I did a boat tour. I went to the islands, Toronto Island. I did this, there was this lovely, uh, there, was, there was a theme park on Toronto Island, which was for kids, so I, I didn't bother with most of it. But it did have this awesome, called the Sky Ride, this awesome thing called the Sky Ride, where you sat in like a ski lift and it took you around the island, you got to see all these different views. That was really awesome. I loved that. Um, it was very beautiful. It was very serene. It was nice just to sort of sit and like glide over the countryside. And it was lovely to see um, the Toronto skyline from the water. It looks really good. It, it's, a, it's an impressive looking city. So that looked, I liked that. And um, what else did I do in Toronto? Did I do anything else? I took a lot of nighttime walks. Toronto is, is, is a nice city to walk through. Um, as I said in my last video, I get lost very easily, but because of the block system, I didn't get lost, which was fantastic. So that was good. I uh, I was staying I was staying very near Kensington Market, so I went to Kensington Market several times, and that's really cool. That that uh, that area has a lot of energy, has a lot of creativity about it. Um, and while I was there, I tried virtual reality gaming, which I had never done before, and that 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 was really weird for me. I've, I mean, I'm sure lots of other people have tried it now, but I, I had never done it before and it, it really, uh, it was really strange that the disconnect, because you knew what you were seeing wasn't real, but it was all around you and it, it you could interact with it. So it sort of became reality for the time you were in there, which is very cool. I'm really interested to see how that technology gets applied in new ways because um, I think it will, it has so many opportunities attached. So that that's really awesome. Um, I, I found a cafe, this was in Kensington Market, which just played 12 Angry Men, not with the dialogue, without, without the sound on, just on a loop. I still haven't quite found out why. I, I couldn't figure out what what that what, what the purpose of that was. But that's that's okay. I mean, as a gimmick, I'm still talking about it now, like two weeks later. So clearly, I got it made a it made an impact on my mind. Um, I saw a film in IMAX. There is no IMAX where I live, so that was really cool as well. Love to see films in IMAX. And yeah, I just I just enjoyed. I love taking city breaks. This 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 has confirmed for me what I what I suspect, which is I think my my favorite kind of holiday is a city break uh, to go to a big city for for a few weeks and just almost just almost like you live there for just a few weeks and you live there with no you don't have a job and you 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 spend more money than you normally would and you can trick yourself into thinking that you're rich you can live like a rich person for a very small time. So that was very nice. Um, Toronto is a lovely city, and I hope I get to go back. Uh, the place I was staying was called Planet Travelers Hostel, and I absolutely recommend it. That was that was a really uh, vital part of the trip, was that the, the hostel where I was staying was full of friendly people. I, I didn't feel bad going back there because there was always stuff going on. There was things to do. The Wi-Fi worked, which was amazing, because lots of hostel Wi-Fi just don't work. Um, so yeah, Planet Traveler, absolutely highly recommend. Um, there was, they were, they were, there was always stuff on, so that was great. Um, yeah, if you want to go to Toronto, I absolutely recommend it. I loved it. Okay, 
Next time I'll be talking about New York.